welcome back, True Seeker. I absolutely hate the way Google has created their platform to encourage and protect trolls. As most of you know, it's impossible to give a comment a thumbs down. And just ask yourself, why would YouTube make it that way? Why not make it so that a bad comment meant to troll can be thumbs down and knocked to the bottom of the feed? The reason why is because they want their troll comments at the top because YouTube needs trolling. Trolling is a great way of sabotaging people who make important videos. Because so many people in this day and age, they'll load up a video and then they'll start scrolling through the comments and then they'll just get their opinion about the video from reading other people's comments. Not realizing that a lot of them are bots and trolls that are on duty meant to attack, you know, videos such as mine. So anyway, I noticed the trolls are leaving lots of comments like this. And the thing about troll comments is you can't thumbs them down and a lot of times you can't even reply to them. Like I can reply to other people's comments, but I can't reply to this troll comment. This person writes, you're going to bring up this but won't talk about Prince or the death of Dennis Green. <laughs> I mean, I'm the guy who predicted Prince's death and how he would die by the exact numbers he died by. I'm also the same guy who had about 20 videos on the death of Prince and probably another five more on the death of Denny Green. And from the day of both of their deaths, I had videos on the day Denny Green died. I said, remember his death in case the Vikings end up being the first team to play in their own Super Bowl. And anyway, the real reason this troll comments left is because look at what it does. First of all, it just completely deflects away from the importance of what's taught in here. It's like, uh, an, why would you make this video if you're not going to talk about this? But I guarantee you this troll knows that I've made all these videos because see, it's like a psychological mindfuck. They're trolling, they're trying to piss off the video maker, and, and they know why it pisses me off. I've had 11 channels deleted since June, you know? So I work hard to get out this information, then some asshole troll comes through, a YouTube employee probably. The same people who turn my videos to comedy status right after I post them. This is all the stuff YouTube does to discredit the truth. But then anyway, leaves these bullshit comments that you can't even respond to. This is what YouTube's about. This is how long noses operate. There's a reason for the term Jude. It didn't come out of nowhere, you know. Understand, all stereotypes exist for a reason. And there's a reason there's stereotypes about all groups of people. Because all groups of people have legitimate stereotypes. Things that are true, you know. So anyway, let's just do this again. Let's cover the deaths of Prince and Denny Green in relation to the Super Bowl. I know all this information off the top of my head. Denny Green died July 21st, 2016, but I just want you to see. He was also born February 17th, but I just want you to see. Denny Green, February 17th birthday. I just did a video about a football player sacrificed earlier this year with this February 17th birthday. He died July 21st, 2016, the day before they opened U.S. Bank Stadium to the fans. And check this out right here. Danny Green died 155 days after his birthday, the day before they opened U.S. Bank Stadium, plus 52 days before the Minnesota opener, Vikings over Titans. We just saw the Patriots beat the Titans. Things to think about. Check this out. February 17th, 2016, Denny Green turned 67 years old. Blood sacrifice, 67. He died July 21st, 2016. That was 155 days after his birthday. Then in ordinal gematria, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, up to Z is 26, using the alphabetic order... U.S. Bank Stadium sums to 155. If you pull out the English Extended Cipher, Killing also has this gematria of 155. Denny Green dead 155 days after his birthday, the day before they opened U.S. Bank Stadium to the fans. Further, he died 52 days before the home opener, which was September 11, 2016. That was Dan Quinn's birthday. Whoops, I gotta put this one in right though. He died July 21st, 52 days before the season opener against the Titans, which was September 11th. I was saying that was Dan Quinn's birthday, who was the Falcons head coach, who made it to the Super Bowl last year. First Sunday on his birthday. 52 days. This stadium is hosting Super Bowl 52 in Minnesota. 
has the Gematria 52 in the base ciphers. Minnesota is also 515, a reshuffling of that 155, using that English extended. But it's 52 that's the big kicker. The top four seeds this year were 13 and 3, kind of like 133, including Minnesota. Minnesota, 133. Notice the 38 as well. U.S. Bank Stadium, 38. We were talking about how Gary Allen Anderson has named Gematria of 98. He had the perfect 98 season for the Vikings. This year is the 98th season of the NFL. Vikings also has Gematria 98. All of these riddles, they're all interconnected. You know, the Vikings had their most disappointing season missing the Super Bowl in the year 98 with Gary Allen Anderson, 98, with the missed kick. Now, the 98th season in the NFL, been talking about these things for over a year. If the Vikings become the first team to represent in their own Super Bowl, Denny Green was a ritual sacrifice for that to happen. I also pointed out he could just be a ritual sacrifice for whichever team is supposed to play in the Super Bowl. He was born in Pennsylvania. The Eagles have a chance to make this Super Bowl. His birthday was also February 17th, 217, a number we talk about with the Patriots a lot. Last year, after they won with the 25-point comeback, number 25, Leonard Myers, dropped dead at age 38 on February 17th, 2 slash 17. See what I'm saying? Denny Green. I said in week three, that's when I picked my Super Bowl this year. I had AFC. Patriots from Super Bowl 51 on. I've been saying them the whole time. From week three, I've been saying the Eagles are the perfect team. 13 years later, rematch, 13 stripes on the flag. It's all about the flag this year. 13's the sixth prime. Brady could pick up his sixth. See what I'm saying? Bill Belichick got his sixth at age 66. Or no, 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 excuse me. Nick Saban got his sixth at age 66. Bill Belichick, if he gets his sixth this year, he'll turn 66 April 16th, the 106th day of the year. So, the only other point to make about Danny Green is this. Danny Green and Gematria sums to 57. This is the Vikings' 57th season. Gary Anderson's 57 years old right now. If you write out 57, it sums to 131. Like Super Bowl's 131. Like Championship's 131. Now, I want to rewind it back to Super Bowl. These other numbers up here are important, too. Prince performed in Super Bowl 41. That's the only Super Bowl halftime that ever had rain in the history of the Super Bowl. He performed Purple Rain in the rain. Rain equals 42. Look at the date of Super Bowl 41. What day do you think it was? Imagine. What day do you think Super Bowl 41 was with the rain performance? It was February 4th. 4 slash 2. Purple Rain. You see? February. That lone month with reduction gematria of 42. February 42. Prince in the rain on 4 slash 2. The Colts won the Super Bowl that year over the Bears. Jim Irsay bought the guitar Prince performed with after his death by the code, as we talked about. Bought it on the anniversary of the Purple Rain release, June 25th, which came out in 1984. But anyhow, Prince performed in Super Bowl 41. He died April 21st, 16. 4 plus 21 plus 16 is 41. Died on a date with 41 numerology. April 21st, 2016, a leap year, was also the 112th day of the year. Talk about the day he died. His connection to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl later that year was Super Bowl 51 in Houston. Houston 112. But I talked about the day he died. The connection from his death to the Super Bowl to the NBA Finals. And remember, on the day the NBA Finals began was the day they came out with the fentanyl story. Remember? That's when the fentanyl news broke. Prince died from fentanyl. Notice the gematria of 98 and 37. Death has gematria of 38 and 97. Prince also has that gematria of 38. Again, Minnesota equals 38. U.S. Bank Stadium equals 38. Gary Anderson missed the 38-yard field goal once upon a time. But fentanyl, a lot of interesting numbers in that drug. 34, 
like murders 34 for a second they tried to make it seem like maybe he committed a suicide 34 notice the gematria of 119 in suicide it's also in fentanyl that's a special number all seeing eye and a whole lot more special number but prince he died last year by the numbers denny green died at age 67 blood sacrifice when spelled correctly Blood sacrifice equals 67. I talked about how the day Denny Green, or excuse me, the day Vanity died, which was February 15th, the 46th day of the year. I talked about how the day she died, Prince better watch out. Prince had the number 67 and 118 coded on him. Prince ended up dying a span of 67 days from Vanity on April 21st. He had the song, I Would Die For You, with the letter U. The letter U is 21. He spelled that song with the number 4 and the letter U. 421, Prince died on 421, April 21st. He also had the song about 319. He died 319 days after his birthday. In Satanic Gematria, Killing is 319. Check out his song, 319. But coming back to Blood Sacrifice, Prince died a span of 67 days. From his birthday, Danny Green dead at 67. We see this pattern again and again. When Prince died, he died in an elevator. Gematria of 118. Like the word death in Jewish Gematria. Prince's name, Prince Rogers Nelson, equals 118. So does death. And before he died, the day Vanity died, I put out a video. I said, Prince, he's got the numbers on him. He's next. Watch for 67 and 118 in Prince. Boom, dead a span of 67 days from vanity, whose death I said he'd be connected to, and dead in an elevator. And if you want to know something really weird, look up Eric Prince. If you don't know who that is, very powerful political family. They own the mercenary military company that we, the taxpayers, give billions of dollars to to pay their mercenary forces off fighting these needless wars. His, his sister is the head of education in this country right now, if you don't know who Eric Prince is. But Eric Prince, his father died in an elevator. Isn't that weird? See how many celebrity deaths have been in the elevator. Elevator also has Gematria 46, like sacrifice. Vanity dead on the 46th day of the year. Vanity 46. Anyway, the day Prince died, show how his death was connected to all of the sports. NBA Finals. Um, the 112th World Series. I had guaranteed the Cubs were going to win the World Series before his death happened. And he last touched down in Illinois right before his death. You know, team from Illinois went on to win the World Series. And then, of course, these riddles with the Super Bowl. His death last year is absolutely connected to what's going on with this year's Super Bowl. And speaking of which, I've never done this before, so let's just do it in real time. Maybe there's something here. The, the Super Bowl is also on February 4th again this year, you know. Same date he performed Super Bowl 41. 93 weeks and three days later from his death, Okay, Minneapolis, Minnesota equals 93. Minneapolis is on the 93rd meridian. Saturn, the keeper of time, has Gematria of 93. Prince died 47 days from his birthday, and time is 47. The first Super Bowl season was the 47. So, absolutely, Prince's death is synced up with this Super Bowl. Does that mean Minnesota's going to be in the game? You know, maybe if we did more research, we could find out for certain. But again, he the, between Denny Green and, and Prince could all just be ritual for the big game, and the numbers are there for the Patriots and Eagles, as I've talked about all season. You know, so definitely not coming off that. But if Minnesota's in the big game, understand that is what these people died for, for Minnesota to be the first team to play in their own stadium. And one more time, Prince said, "All we can go by in this world is prophecy." That's his quote. Talked about that all year. Lo and behold, they opened up his house as a museum on October 6th. 10 slick, 6. Notice the 666 in prophecy. Notice the 110 as well. Minnesota has the 110 and 52. So, very interesting. It's also interesting that Minnesota is 365 in Jewish. I, I, learn, I learn things every day, and I forget a lot of things because there's so much to keep track of. But sometimes I see things, I think, oh, why would Minnesota be 365 in Jewish? Is there a riddle there? I'm sure there is.
But focusing on Denny and Prince, and just in case you forgot what day Prince died, let's put it up here. It is April 21st, 2016. Vanity died February 15th. That was the first day of Looper, or no, excuse me, that was the third day of Lupercalia, 46th day of the year. If you don't know Lupercalia, Gematria 44, it begins on February 13th, the 44th day of the year. Whoops, the word kill, also 44, you know. Antonin Scalia, murdered by the numbers on a ranch on the 44th day of the year. <laughs> Not by some Obama conspiracy, you know. That, that's what's wrong with the people of this world. They they don't understand what's going on in the world. They, they think everything through the media is like a legit narrative. They don't understand that everything through the media is meant to play them for a fool. You know, make them fight over a false narrative. Antonin Scalia was killed by the same people, you know, that control the entire show. The Zionist Jews who own this world because they own the money which owns all things. And this is how they operate, by controlling everything this way. Murdering people, doing everything by this code known as Kabbalah. You know, I'll show you this about Super Bowl 52. Kabbalah 52, the word the Kabbal 52. It's where Kabbalah and the Kabbal meet. The term the Kabbal comes from Kabbalah. The Kabbal are the secret political faction, you know, operating above people. This is how the Kabbal operates, with Kabbalah which is the belief that God created the world by merging the letter with the number. And that's called Gematria 52. You know, the physical model for Kabbalah is the Tree of Life 52, and the Jewish word for Tree of Life is Etzah Chaim 52. You know? November 9th, our entire calendar synced up with this, by the way. November 9th, always a big day in history, the day the Berlin Wall fell. That's the day that leaves 52 days left in the year. And there's a lot of synchronicities like this with the calendar. But, uh, you know, 52 is a big number. So there, there's a huge, there's going to be some huge rituals in Super Bowl 52. They've also, you know, I don't think they'll mess with the Super Bowl. They like to always get this, like, fear hype going around it. But if there was ever a year they were going to do something stupid at the Super Bowl, th this year might make sense. They've had multiple big venue attacks this year. The hoax on May 22nd in the UK. By the way, I called that date for a major terror hoax months before it happened, and also the terror hoax in Las Vegas, which I called months before it happened. You know, nailed two major false flag dates and told people to circle those dates as the biggest ones on the calendar this past year, and they were the two biggest false flags. They were both at, you know, major events. Out of both of them, narratives came, could we see terrorism at something like the Super Bowl? If they did it this year at Super Bowl 52, this would be why. But understand, if they did anything, it's just all bullshit. They just stage these scenes. Nobody's getting shot. Nobody's getting hurt. They're just, you know, you guys have to understand what's going on in these drills. This is your police, your military, your government conspiring against you, doing what they are paid to do. Follow orders, you know? So you don't understand how all these things are pulled off because people are all in the same situation in this world. Do your job, follow your contract, don't break the rules or you'll be out on your ass. And next thing you know, you'll be a bum on the corner. That's everyone's mentality in this country. Anyway, it is your police, military, they're getting together across the world. They're staging shooting scenes. They're creating fake <laughs> casualty scenes and they're reporting it as mass tragedies. If anything happened at Super Bowl 52, that's what it would be. So don't what I'm saying is, if you're going to go to this game, don't stay home because you're afraid of terrorism. The reason to stay home is because you don't want to be paying for tickets and food that goes to these tyrants, you know? So anyway, wanted to drop that knowledge on the deaths of Prince and Dennis Green, and it's too bad that all my mini videos were deleted because there's a million more things to the story. You know, there were so many things I revealed about Prince's death. In my, in my book, there's a lot of information. On both of these men's death. And uh, this next comment down here. It's crazy how they do this. It's like they can see the future. Th this person is probably new to my work. You guys. They don't see the future. They've planned the future. You know how when a book or a movie series comes out. You're watching part one. You're reading part one. But parts two, three, and four are already written. That's what these people have done with the world. They have scripted and planned our future and they're working at a pace that they can control the masses. 
the elites are ahead of us in technology. A big gap between where we are and what they're capable of. So when you have this kind of advantage, you can say, okay, we're going to reveal to people this much about technology by this year. Why do you guys think that technology is always on a steady, never-ending, you know, increase? Computers continually getting better and cheaper. They want everybody in front of the computer. But how is this possible to just continue on a perfect trajectory as technology does? It's because they're already way ahead with all of this stuff. And they're taking us to the point that they want us to be at by each planned chapter, if you will. Of each planned new season. This is the world we're living in. It's so obvious. I've been explaining it so clearly. That's why September 11th happened at the beginning of the new century. And this is just how blind we are as a nation. The information I had as an 18-year-old was actually mostly from watching the news and seeing the things they were putting right before my face. The news, I don't know, remember if it was 60 Minutes or John Stossel or what it was where I first saw it, but I just remember on TV when they talked about this project for a new American century that was now the Bush administration and how they'd actually written about how we needed a new Pearl Harbor to catapult an agenda in the Middle East and, you know, make some domestic changes for a growing, rapidly expanding United States population. You know, they're telling you this right on the news, and I'm going, really? Project for a new American century. They need a new Pearl Harbor for a war in the Middle East. They need a new domestic agenda to control the population? Did they just put that on the news right after they just showed me this bullshit September 11th story with the perfect demolitions of towers? You know? And they told you a man in a cave across the world did it. Now you need to give up your rights. You don't need any more liberties. You need the government to track you and keep records on you. You know, you need a new hit action show with Keith or Sutherland where he's Jack Bauer and every week he's busting up some terrorists. You guys didn't notice how that show released right with 9-11 and then Mo Lewis flew into Drew Bledsoe. The New York Jet took down number 11 and then came Tuck Rule Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback who... Had hardly an athletic bone in his body. No ability to run. No agility. Somehow, magically, despite his lack of athleticism, defensive coordinators cannot figure out how to get to this guy in a league full of the fastest, strongest men in the world. No matter who Tom Brady's offensive line is, they just give him all day in the pocket. No matter what defense he's going up against, his receivers just have all this clearance and gap room. And, and I just hate listening to the Goyim talk about these games. They'll link a clip. What about this throw right here? 